Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Fortnite Battle Royale tips and tricks video. In this video, we're going to be analyzing two victory royales I got here and basically just talking about how to get decent killer, like not even high killer, but just normal solo wins consistently. We're going to analyze two um, just average wins that I got here in this video. If you guys could drop a like on this thing, that would be very, very much appreciated. Smack that like button, that would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and also a big shout out to everyone using my supporter creator, the Goblin YT in the Fortnite item shop. Big, big thank you to everyone that supports me with that. It is very, very much appreciated. So here we go. Um, basically, I think in this game, I was um, basically playing a really slow early game. Where I was completing challenges. So obviously, we're coming into it and I only have one kill. But I stack up the kills here at the end. And that's why we're going to analyze my different moves. So right here, of course, the first thing was uh, winning that fight with that player. And then another player immediately tries to third party hit me. And I make a very smart play there. And I had to dance. I don't usually dance on enemies when I, when I kill them. But that guy comes into my one by one and, of course, tries to place the trap on the ground which is a smart play however i jumped place the ramp and then put traps all around and that is a good strategy to do a lot of people get stuck with their builds out however if you can get quick at spamming traps and it's not just about placing one trap it's about placing them around you because if you place just one which is a mistake a lot of people do players can't escape from that so you can see here basically this is how fortnite works sometimes you won't get action for a while but then when you do there will be uh, quite a bit of action and the one thing you'll notice in these gameplays which is uh i've been talking about since season eight is the glider redeploy and how amazing that is so here we go i have the silent scar i get some damage in over here which is kind of unfortunate because that player was about 30 hp and the other guy gets the kill but then i have another player over here and i hit this player for 66 so immediately once i hit for this damage i'm at 150 health i have nothing to heal up i have nothing else to do so i'm going to rush this player and try to put you know uh, more damage into them and that's what i do here once again i uh, get this player even more weak but then eventually they just fall off but i would you know i was about to get the kill anywhere that anyway there with my shotgun or smg because they were down to about 30 health so so far you can basically see how I was able to win those gunfights and play it smart. Coming up later here, we can see there's four people left and this is where uh, I'm going to analyze and talk about what I do and how I'm able to win late game here. So the big thing late game I talk about nowadays in season eight is conserving materials and having the redeploy. And you'll watch what I do here. So there's four people left and basically what I'm trying to do at this point is conserve materials. So I don't want to rush up to the top of that mountain, although I know that is probably going to be prime real estate. The zone is probably going to push to somewhere like you know over there um, I wait until I see the next zone which is a major major key learning how the map works and how the timer works you can see the timer right now is until the zone starts moving and then when the zone is, is coming in and then you also have the timer until you see the next zone right so it's very very important stuff once the zone fully completes in you'll see where the next zone is going to go so that's what I do I take my time I wait and then I use one of these jump pads for a rotation now you can't really control the fact you, you could have 10 kills and no jump pads I try to preserve jump pads for late game or like medium to late game if I can but even if you don't have it you can usually pick up a glider redeploy and you can see this is the beauty of having a redeploy you can basically camp up in the sky remember back in the day like Fortnite when people would make a sky bases and try to get to like the top 10 or win games because no one would look up in the sky and notice the sky bases you can now do that because you can have glider redeploy and most players you know the casual players don't carry the glider redeploy so you can basically as, as I'm doing here every time this player tries to get high ground above me there's no reason I should lose high ground because every time this player builds up, I can just build up and stay a couple tiers uh, above them and it makes gunfights a lot easier when you have high ground by default. Every time you hear someone building, you just build up even higher and then also you don't have to worry about fall damage because you do have that glide to redeploy and one thing bad is if, if you're floating in the air with the redeploy, but if you can time it and activate it right near like the, when you're about to hit the ground, it can be super duper effective. So right here, four people left and this is where ma preserving materials is huge and you can see here another player tries to rush me a third party so I match this guy's builds immediately I'm not willing to lose high ground at this point because I realized like I need to stay up here to be able to win this game I don't have many if I go back down I only have what 600 700 materials so I won't have enough to go back up anyway I get some damage into this player and once again another player who I damage that falls off and what I do here is I make the conscious decision to drop down this is beautiful because I don't have to use materials to drop down 
and I can just drop down for free, pick up this guy's loot, and then build right back up. And the reason why I did that is, of course, because my mats were getting kind of low, and preserving mats is a major, major key. I connect the build back up on top here, and now I'm in just such a great position where I don't know where these other players are, but there's no chance they're above me. There's no chance they have an angle at me, really. So I can just sort of chill out, you know, uh, make sure I cover my sides and see what's happening. The next zone is pushing in. And now this is where I always talk about rotating early and that matters. But sometimes where the zone is pushing in these, like I'm talking like top three, top four scenarios, it is smart to rotate late like I do here. So I get a view of basically what's going on. I jump pad up and if you, if they don't notice when you're up in the sky, you can s stay up there and float around. But basically I'm able to have the good positioning, carry on with the good positioning. And uh, it, it's kind of was a, a, a late rotation, but it was also an early rotation because I beat them here, you know, because I knew I had the jump pad and jump pads and glider redeploys are such, such a huge key. So right there, I pick up a kill and then obviously I had some damage into this other player as well. I have uh, six kills so far. So all I'm going to do is once again, just do the same thing. Play the angle to the zone. The zone is pushing. This guy has to keep moving towards me. I obviously get this player weak and I kind of make a mistake there of dropping down. I just wanted to end the game. I was kind of, you know, anxious just to end it there. But I could have, you know, he could have hit the one shot, crazy headshot uh, with a shotgun on me. So that kind of was a risky play. I probably should have stayed above and chose a smarter time to drop down. But that is how we got the win. Next gameplay here, you'll see another one where I was uh, doing some challenges as well. Doing challenges is not like, even though I'm already like level 100 on the battle pass because I purchased the tiers to show off in a YouTube video, like the XP you get from challenges is just crazy. So here you can see another game and I'm moving in here onto Loot Lake and I pick off this first kill um, just by basically third partying. And then once I get the damage into this next player, I'm moving up immediately. And this is a weird scenario where I got the kill. Um, I kind of took this guy's kill, but he gets the loot because he's closer, right? So he's going to grab this person's loot. I don't know if that's going to give him shields that he needs. I don't know what that if that's going to give him a campfire that he needs. So I'm going to push that immediately. That is a sign for offense. And once again, even though he hits me with like a bullet or two, it doesn't matter because of the 50 health and shield that I'm able to gain. And that's why I'm able to get the first two kills. It is important, even if you're trying to play safe, if you don't really care about kills at all, to get a couple kills before the end game so you can have good loot. You know, with, get, with getting loot, it's either you're picking it up off the ground or from the environment or, or you're farming it up or you're getting it from killing players and taking it from them so here I go I'm moving in once again and this is a, a, another scenario where I get uh, a good angle on this player but I know there's another player up there so I'm of course staying on this side of the base so basically this player is in the middle and he's sandwiched in a terrible uh, situation I hit 44 with the SMG for the headshot there and this is just another time where I want this kill and and but it's I, I'm not gonna go out of my way and start running in there, pickaxing. I'm taking my time. I'm playing it smart because I realize this player isn't the only player that's left. There is still another player, right? So I'm, I'm going to play it smart and eventually it's going to work out. So you can see this guy is completely tucked in. I end up pulling out the AK, getting that kill. And now immediately I'm going to move on to this next kill. Of course, I still want to pick up this player's loot. And a lot of people will place traps when they're boxed in. And most of the time you can hear it like right there. I heard that they were happening already, but sometimes you won't hear it. So it's important to always check. I make sure I get the best loot here and um, I actually almost mess up with my, my builds here because I get pressured by this player right away and you can see I don't have the glider redeploy in my inventory because I didn't pick it up in time. I have one mini instead, which is kind of annoying, but I decide, you know, I don't have time to do that right now. I'm going to stay up here. I'm going to... Um, try to build and fight against this player. Then I eventually drop down because I realized, okay, there was a 50 pot down there, which once I get to 125, mini, and then of course I want the 50. And I also wanted to grab the uh, redeploy anyway, which I'll do once I pop, uh, you know, the shield. So this is a smart play where I'm boxed in. And then of course, when this player gets into my box, it's fairly simple from there. I spam a bunch of traps. You guys saw me do that in the first gameplay as well. And traps are very, very strong. The key, sometimes like people can, can dodge them and stuff. And the key with that is most of the time when people are only placing one trap, you want to place as many of them as possible. They can be kind of faulty or glitchy at sometimes. So here I'm getting pushed by another player, but I want to get some heals off. And uh, basically this is where turtling up is strong and I don't like to turtle up unless I have to of course the reason why I was already I was kind of already in a box before that player approached me but I come out to the side I end up building up and taking the high ground right back again and here's another scenario where I still don't have that redeploy and this is just because the amount of pressure that was on me you'll see once you know once again just building up staying above this player and eventually this player does end up uh, leaving the the area and I also end up leaving the area because we have to move in you can see the zone is pushing us and we have to move in 
uh, and that's basically what I decided to do. And this one, you can see I moved in. I don't have the redeploy because I decided to go with the double on in terms of the slurp juices, which are very effective. Honestly, one of my favorite things because for late game, the slurp juices are, are so underrated because you can, like it takes whatever, 2.5 2 seconds or something. I don't, I don't know exactly how long, but not very long to pop them. You know, it's very, very short amount of time. And then and then you can sort of build and use your, your protections as, as you're being healed. It's sort of like you have a campfire going, but you're also moving around. So here basically I'm early rotated. This game, I do not have the redeploy, which I had it for a portions of the game. So at this point, I realized I do not have it. And, you know, I'm not building anything ridiculously high. I'm playing this more like a traditional end game. I'm putting pressure in here. And this is where I realize resources matter nowadays, especially in season eight materials matter if you can make someone waste 100 materials that can help you win the game i have whatever 800 900 scar ammo uh, assault rifle ammo i don't care if i'm spraying this ammo if i'm making them use builds whether it's wood whether it's brick whether it's metal this is helping me what you know even if i kill that player another person's going to get their loot it's any damage i can do any materials that i can or resources resources i can make people use is giving me an advantage so here i realized and this is a big thing with late game notice where your opponents are and keep track of them so three people Left, that means me obviously this enemy and then the one enemy below me so i'm like okay i'm in a little bit of a situation here where if this goes poorly i could end up being in the middle and when there's three people left that is the you don't want to be the one getting third party when there's three people left that is one of the worst feelings in fortnite especially when you've invested so much time into this game so i end up rotating early once again another slurp juice a beautiful amount of loot and the thing with supply drops now is so many people are just not are underrating the ability of a supply drop because you can see them on the map They're so worth going for now. So I basically set up I realize okay next zone is gonna be near me I get a little bit of height here, but not too much because I don't want to waste materials and I also don't have a redeploy and uh, Then I decide to start to move to, to the next zone um, while also keeping track of these players Of course as soon as I realize one of the players has died now It's a 1v1 and then it's like once it gets to, to the point where it's a 1v1 It's just about what is the best for that particular particular gunfight or, or build fight or whatever it's going to be. Uh, I play it smart. I realize, hey, I don't want to move into the zone and rotate when I can just, basically this player is blocked off. I have the angle on them. I have the zone advantage and I can win it that way. Thanks for watching guys. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and hopefully this video did help you guys out. I'll see you in the next one and I'm out. Peace.